Hi everyone, Gary Kozu here, and we're very lucky today to have with us Scott Rulon of Rulon Financial, who's going to talk to us about the fiendish <laughs> Corporate Transparency Act, which will be affecting quite a lot of us, I'm sure. Uh, it seems to uh, anyway apply to virtually every small business in the country, um, but Scott's going to give us some more details on it and how you can... Uh, uh basically uh how can i put this immunize yourself perhaps from some of the worst effects of this uh new new uh and kind of like um i don't know pretty invasive act actually i'd say so without much further ado i'm going to hand it over to you scott and uh, you have the floor take it away all right sounds good gary well, have you ever woken up at night and had a nightmare about, about what's going on? Um, I think this new Corporate Transparency Act is one of those nightmares we never expected, Gary. Um, in yeah. fact, what's happening is for, I just got a notice from, and this actually says for immediate release. Um, and it, at the top of it, um, those of you that don't know, I live in the state of Arizona. So you're likely going to have a commission very similar to this in your state. It says Arizona Corporation Commission announces a new federal reporting requirement under the Corporate Transparency Act. So this is an act that was literally passed in the middle of the night three years ago. And I will bet most of you have never heard of it. Um, but I would suspect in the next several weeks, whether you are a lawyer, you're a realtor, you run a non-finance small business, uh, you're going to start hearing this. Um, so I'm going to read you a little bit about of this announcement from the Arizona Corporation Commission, because you will likely get something very similar. And so this says the Arizona Corporation Commission is committed to supporting and facilitating business operations in Arizona. In line with this commitment and our ongoing efforts to keep business owners well informed, the ACC, Arizona Corporation Commission, wishes to inform about a significant new law reporting requirement from January 1st, 2024. The United States Congress has passed the Corporate Transparency Act to combat money laundering, terror, and terrorist financing. The act mandates beneficial ownership reporting for corporations, limited liability companies, and the catch-all phrase, and similar entities registered in the United States. Entities form or registered before January 1st 2024 must file an initial beneficial ownership report before January 1st, 2025. So I know that was a mouthful for many of you, but let me give you some of the basic requirements. And then, you know, we can discuss later on whether we feel this is beneficial or not. So here are the basic retirements requirements. So if you work in a, let's just call it a non-finance type of business, um, so that could be real estate, that could be, you could be in the legal profession, just about any other profession. Um, we have found in our latest research that over 32 million businesses will be caught up in this new kind of reporting. I mean, talk about Big Brother stepping in. So, Gary, sounds like George Orwell's 1984. What do you think? I think it sounds very alarming, actually. It seems like another attempt to break away any kind of uh, privacy that we have at all. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what they want you to report. I mean, they've already get they're already getting this stuff anyway, aren't they? From the IRS and from the Corporation Commission, why um, why why have another area that's you know is this the like some kind of secret police task force or something? That's it, almost it, it, what it seems like because this will be administered by a 
a different department of the U.S. Treasury. Um, they are called FISON, and FISON stands for the Financial Crimes Enforcement Enforcement Unit. That's just crazy. So um, you are going to have to apply and get what is called a new FISA number. Um, I'm not sure how long that number is going to be, but I suspect it's very, very much like something you get with your um, your employee ID number um, for your businesses. Um, if your business has less than five million dollars in sales and or less than 20 employees, guess what? What do you think, Gary? Guess what? <laughs> it applies to you. Yeah, that's going to be a big to chunk. It applies to you. Yeah. It applies to me, by the sound of it. Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the worries here, Gary, is um, how many people do you know that have maybe have like a little bit of a side hustle going on? Oh, a lot now, particularly since COVID. Yeah, I think they had to. Yeah, and so if your business is an LLC, an S Corp, a corporation, or a similar type of perhaps business trust, guess what? Even if you didn't make money at it, you're going to have to report. So that's a little crazy. So let me give you some key points here, the Corporate Transparency Act. Um, the reports must be filed with a Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. Not your state corporation commission, by the way. I'm sure they're going to end up getting a whole bunch of stuff that they didn't expect because of this. Um, most businesses registered with the corporation commissions are subject to this requirement. So here's the scary part, Gary. Guess what? Non-compliance may lead to significant civil and criminal. That's right criminal penalties. So um, I know the civil penalty example, Gary, for each day um, that you should have filed but didn't, that penalty is $500 a day. It's a bargain. Um, <laughs> a bargain. And it can go as high as $10,000. Yep, you heard that correctly. $10,000. And... There are criminal penalties as well. So those criminal penalties are as follows. Up to one to two years in prison. That is correct, in prison for not doing this. So they don't even do that for our tax returns. You know, even the IRS tends to show us some leniency. Now, eventually they do want to get our taxes filed for sure. And if you wait too long, it can turn criminal. But this one, in fact, if you have a new business in 2024 and you are subject to this, guess how many days you have before you have to file, Gary? Don't tell me, 30. 30. Is it 30? Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. That was a lucky guess, but days. 30 seems excessive. Incredibly short, yeah. That is an incredibly short uh, period of time. And so... Uh, for those of that you want to read a little bit more about this, get a little bit more detail, then we'll go into our in our um, webcast here. Um, I do have a financial blog. It's a place called my m y financial fair f a i r dot com, and I have two write ups that I have done several months ago. Um, both of these were in October. Uh, I actually first found out about this, Gary, last March last March or April, and I started talking to my other CPA colleagues about it. I've even talked to some attorneys about it. And you know what, what answer they gave me when I asked them about the Corporate Transparency Act? Gary, what do you think they answered? Pretty don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, the, kick it down the road or something. Yeah, yeah. The two words you never like to hear, what's that? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, this was definitely a what's that. So, I mean, it's crazy what the government gives away, gets away with. Well, this I mean, could have uh, 
amazing repercussions though because say for example you decide that this year in your new year's resolution you want to do a new job uh, and you want to do a side ha hustle like real estate it's a good example and you register you know you take your courses get your license whatever don't make any money which is pretty typical for real estate, real estate agents starting out do you still have to file this thing you do you uh, actually even if you haven't made any commissions in real estate you're still in the hole yeah, because at the beginning of real estate, you know you're paying out money all the time, and then they're going to hit you with having to re report this thing as well. Yeah, a whole a whole new set of compliance reporting. Unbelievable. So I suspect this was not so much about um, it. It is certainly about money laundering. I have no doubt. It's certainly about um, terrorism. But I think Big Brother. Uh, wants to take a close look at all of our personal affairs. And so here's some of the things you're going to have to do as a result of this, Gary. You're going to have to give them a copy of your driver's license. Right. And so if you give them a copy of your driver's license, guess what they also have access to? No idea. What? Your home address. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Your home address. Don't they have that anyway in the the corporation reports anyway? I believe that to be true, but I will tell you on a lot of the corporation commission reports, a lot of people do put P.O. boxes. Oh, they do? Okay. But they are actually asking for a real home address. So the other thing that they're asking for is all of the beneficial ownership of your company. Right. So, Gary, can you imagine that there are businesses that may have some silent partners there who don't want the rest of the world to know that they own a piece of the business? I'm sure there's a lot, yeah. Yeah, I think they are going to be very upset about that. And by the way, they use the term beneficial ownership. So that does not actually mean necessarily an equity position in a company, although that's probably the case. But what if you are a person that has significant influence over a company? Let's say you get paid some sort of stipend from a company and you engage them to help them with advice on how to grow their company. Do you think that person has a significant influence over the company? Well, I can think of, uh, yeah, a, a lot of examples of that as well, actually. Well, particularly particularly so, politicians sitting on boards of companies and getting consulting fee, uh, fees or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like they've shot themselves in the foot with that one. No. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, transparency is actually the name of the game. In fact, um, uh, there was a recent report on that um, one of the ABC affiliate here in Arizona talking about uh, we've got a place called the well, it's actually called the Arizona Corporation Commission that has a, a board on top of that. They're the people that actually regulate utilities in our state, Gary. Right. And um, people are coming at, after them for lack of transparency. Okay. They're supposed to pass some new guidelines for that. And they've actually been dragging their feet, from what I understand, for over three years. <laughs> By the way, as you can see, if we were to drag our feet, Gary, uh, what was we've, that thing? We'd be in jail for the sound of it. Criminal? But, uh, yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah, that would be criminal. So never, never seen anything like it. So, um, so transparency is no longer just a buzzword. It's absolutely a necessity. Businesses will be under increasing pressure to be more open and forthcoming about their business practices i get it to a certain extent because they don't want i don't know russian mafia owning companies and for example and uh no, not being listed on them and taking money out of them this seems to go beyond way beyond that because it's going so small that's that's the weird thing about it i get it to a certain extent but you know if you're you know joe blow the plumber you know, whatever, and you're you're making a hundred grand a year. You're hardly a threat to the society. You know, it's not. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know. It seems to be excessive. 
that would probably be the uh, how I feel about it. It's it's like using a a sledgehammer to put a a nail in the wall. It's, it's, I kind of feel the same way. I mean, it's. I think most small business owners, especially owners of businesses that have less than five million in sales, are struggling. They're struggling. <laughs> yeah. How much? Yeah. yeah. How much time do you think that they really have to fund terrorism or yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> hide money and so yeah. i think when we're talking about hide money i i'm certain there are people out there that may not report every hundred dollars they receive right um but this is not really about that i think they're looking for people and this is just my personal opinion people that would have the ability to funnel millions of dollars to a terrorist organization right um, one of the things that I have to go through, Gary, and you may not even know this, I have to actually take anti-money laundering training. Oh, I've um, done that. I've done that as well for insurance. Absolutely. Yeah. So for insurance, for my FINRA licenses, um, I have to go through the same level of anti-money laundering training that uh, most banks have to go through. Right. And I have to do that once a year and, tur and, turn, that and turn that in. Um, if I don't take that, they can pull my license. And I bet it costs you money too. Well, it does cost me money because I have to. <laughs> I have to pay for the class. Yeah, right. Exactly. So even with this, I, I somehow I see a filing charge. <laughs> yeah. There's or always some, a file. There's yeah, always when, something. Yeah. yeah. When it comes to government, you know, there's always a filing charge. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the other interesting thing, Gary. I just want to read you a line from my blog here. This says. This information will then be accessible to law enforcement agencies, financial institutions, and others involved in directing, detecting, and preventing financial crimes. How do you feel about law enforcement having access to all of your financial data? I, I think it's kind of, um, I, don't, I don't know quite how I feel about it. it it's, it's kind of offensive that we're being... Uh, all these small businesses, <laughs> including you and I, I guess, are uh, being targeted when we haven't done anything. <laughs> you know, I get it. If it was you did something dodgy and you had the uh, whatever this uh, department is on your back, okay. But I mean, for people who are just trying to run their businesses and pay their bills, it's kind of offensive too. It's no, like absolutely. So all they're all they're saying at the government level is this act is to combat money laundering terrorism financing and we got the catch-all price phrase other illicit activities yeah um so i actually about a month ago gary i got someone sent me a copy of a recent new york times article that talked about um the four largest banks in america and so those are ones like wells you know the names wells fargo chase bank of america I'm sure there's others as well, but they are actually being trained to confiscate money. Nice. Okay. And not only are they being trained to confiscate money, guess what they get if they confiscate money? Oh, don't tell me. They get commission. <laughs> they get, how big a commission do you think they get, Gary? Uh, golly, I don't know. A uh, third of money recovered, say? Actually, it's even more than that. It's Is 40%. It? Wow. And they don't even have to tell you. Nice. Um, there's there's something in the financial world called a suspicious activity report, Gary. Right. And that's one of the reasons that a lot of us have to take um, mm -hmm. anti anti money laundering training. It's because of um, these things called suspicious activities. Right. And so um, if I have a client in here, and if I even sniff that I think they're doing something wrong. It is my obligation to report a suspicious activity to the broker dealer or registered financial uh, investment advisor that I work for. Right. And guess what, Gary? I can't even tell you that I filed one. <laughs> um, it is it is done in secret. In fact, um, this morning I walked next door to a local credit union. Was sitting sitting with the teller to um, you know make a business deposit, 
And you know what the first question she asked me this morning is? What is this new Corporate Transparency Act? Oh, really? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, she really asked me what See, thought, that was. I thought they had stuff in place for this already. I mean, I, you know, if you, I mean, I might be wrong on this, but isn't it there, uh, if, if you deposit more than 10 grand or something, or they can question on it, which is fair enough, but uh, aren't there already these kind of safeguards in place? Um, there, there are a few of them in place. The very first act that was ever passed was, uh, I think it was around 1970, it was called the Bank Secrecy Act. Um, and the Bank Secrecy Act established that, let's say you go to buy a car, Gary, right. and you take a, a satchel full of cash. That would be suspicious, <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, so anytime that that was, was $10,000 or more, right. um, the car dealer would have to file what's called a currency transaction report. Right. And so that was the whole beginning of this money laundering thing. Um, for those of you who've been around for a while and remember under the Bush administration, um, anybody hear about the, the Patriot Act? Sure. Well, yeah, Patriot Act was another step down this road um, about uh, reporting, you know, as the so-called war on terrorism and um i mean who they want to label a terrorist is their business but um sure. apparently they want to label most small businesses as suspect of that potential I thought, <laughs> yeah. yeah potential terrorist suppliers that's terrible no i thought we lived in a place where we are um innocent until proven guilty yeah i would like to think so so um, I actually read a case, and this was actually in the New York Times in October, um, where they had confiscated money from a daycare provider. Well known for terrorist activities. Um, yeah, I suppose anywhere. I mean, there, there are obvious targets. I mean, that where I, I know that I've read stuff in, in the past that the uh, uh, apparently the mob used to use laundromats because they had a lot of money, a lot of change, but uh, and stuff like that. And I can understand there are a lot, a lot of businesses where, well, there's probably not a lot now, actually, where they handle large sums of cash. And uh, I, I could get it if they were more uh, heavily scrutinized, let's say. I get that. But most businesses that we know, including your, you know, yours and mine, we don't see any cash anyway. You know, it's all credit cards. I mean, it's not even checks anymore. Uh, you know, direct uh, uh, transfers and stuff and uh, what have you. But cash? No, not really. I mean, who deals in cash? I think there's not many people that deal in cash anymore. You I, know, I don't think can, so. No, I don't yeah, think so. Even so. if someone these days writes you a check, um, a lot of the businesses I know, first of all, most of them don't accept checks anymore. Right. Um, I very but, rarely write checks. Nobody ever asked me for them. Yeah. Yeah. But those that do, they've got these check reading machines. Yeah. Because they want to find out right away if the check is good. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you can't blame them for that. Yeah. Yeah, and so um, I would say most of the cash that I see happening these days um, is really non-existent. It's more about um, credit cards or debit cards. Yeah, yes, definitely. So there is certainly some sort of electronic record um, that takes that takes place these days. I would say, you know, even in my own tax preparation business, I would say most of the money we receive for tax preparation fees comes through credit cards. Right. Oh, if you don't take credit cards, you, you you're not going to survive for very long in business. It's yeah. uh, everything's credit cards, which which comes with pluses too because you get extra protection from it. You know, so yeah. Absolutely. So, um, so what are the challenges and potential risks here? So I'll just, I'll read you a little bit from my blog here. So unveiling the power of the Corporate Transparency Act and taking a closer look at the new act means implementing corporate transparency is not without its challenges and potential risks. For companies with complex ownership structures, or those um, operating in jurisdictions with 
weak regulatory frameworks. I can't, I don't even know what a weak regulatory framework is. <laughs> um, identifying <laughs> no. and disclosing beneficial over owners can be a daunting task. It may require significant resources and expertise to navigate the complexities of corporate ownership. So there is certainly a risk of unintended consequences. While the act aims to combat illicit um, financial activities, there's a possibility that it may also deter legitimate businesses from operating in certain industries or jurisdictions. So another way you might think about this, Gary, um, so if we know that there are 32, ma 32 million small businesses that um, make less than $5 million a year and have less than, than 20 um, employees. Who Who's missing from this, Gary? Yeah, the big companies are missing from it. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're probably... What about the big companies? <laughs> Why do they not have to comply um, with the same level of scrutiny we do? Yeah, that no, makes uh, no sense. I agree. Yeah, because I will tell you, you know, in my profession, you know, there's Gary as an insurance producer. Um, do you did you ever have to go down and get yourself fingerprinted? Oh yeah, yeah, I had fingerprints for. I've had them done in the last eighteen months for insurance and for real estate, and they wouldn't uh, accept you just having one of them. You've got to have them done each time, you know, by different departments. Even though they're, they're, I'm sure there's a record of them somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, if the small businesses didn't have already have enough on their shoulders, guess what? Yeah. They have a whole new level of complexity. I don't, I don't so, see what the, you know, obviously the uh, the reason for this, or the, uh, if you may want to say, excuse for this, is to combat terrorism and, uh, you know, money laundering, which is fair enough, but. With most things, like with the IRS, they have a goal. Their goal is to get, no doubt, as much money in as they can, which yeah. doesn't necessarily involve chucking everybody in jail. But what is the real purpose here? Because they're not going to get – Are they? They do they think they're going to get significant amounts of money out of this from – uh confiscating money or do they you know it doesn't doesn't look like that they would because these are all small companies that don't have much money yeah so I, a, yeah what's the goal tax this is a tax without a tax yeah it's weird isn't it yeah, usually it's... you know you follow you follow the money you go look this is the purpose why they're doing this to raise revenue blah 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 um that you could say it was to fight crime but Seems like they've already got enough stuff in place where they're perfectly able to do that. If the uh, various agencies involved collaborated, which one would presume they do, you know, do, 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 do A dot not collaborate with, I don't know, the IRS or any of the major government agencies? I mean, couldn't they get your driver's license anyway? I, I would think that they oh, could. But, I would I mean, thought so. so so the government line on this is the following four. They want to establish a culture of transparency. They want to implement robust internal controls. They want to engage with stakeholders. And they want to ex seek external validation. How many small companies do you know that actually have the money to implement a whole set of robust internal controls? Right, right. I mean, I used to work for one of the largest convenience stores at, in the nation. Um, they're called Cir Circle K, and we had all kinds of internal controls. But the interesting thing is that internal controls really only went up to about the director level. Right. After the director level, I think they could almost do just about anything they wanted. Yeah. Um. So as a small business owner, I, and you know as a small business owner, your head is spun in many different directions. Oh, no kidding, yeah. It, I, I yeah. wake up dizzy. <laughs> There's so many things to do all the time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there was an old book it put out a number of years ago. Some of you may have read it. It was called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. And yeah, it's a great, great book. I read that several times. Yeah, and he was talking about how business owner has to wear many hats. You know, right. he has to be a marketer. 
He has to be a manager. He has to be a financial controller. He has to be this. He has to be that. Um, I just don't know how you wear all these hats at once sometimes. Um, and I have a feeling there is going, there could be, although I don't advocate it, lots of non-compliance with this because people will just throw up their hands. Or you're also kind of stifling the um, the world of entrepreneurship. It you sounds like he's putting people off signing up a business. Yeah, I, I is, is Stephanie, guess, Stephanie going to do that? Yeah, I would absolutely guess that's that's going to be the case because there are there are just not a whole lot of small businesses that make more than five million dollars a year. No. Um, so think about you know even. I'm really surprised that our, that um, law firms are subject to this because they have some probably oh, yeah. complex um, partnership arrangements um, where this is really going to be a mess, Gary, is in the real estate industry. Yeah, that, that would seem to be uh, yeah, my, my conclusion too, actually. Yeah. I, it's yeah. I mean, the real estate business is tough enough as it is. In, uh, in spite of people thinking that realtors make great money, they do. They do if they actually sell something, but most of them don't. You know, they're struggling with taking constant. Uh, you know, they've got constant educational uh, things to perform and uh, licenses to get and reviews and what have you. And it's just another. Uh, Another plate to spin, basically. Yeah. I mean, I think very much the same thing. You know, a lot of small businesses after our our latest, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, COVID cares, whatever. Um, a lot of businesses are still kind of reeling from that. They're trying to to recover. And now they want, the government wants them to spend more money for a different type of accountability. Yeah. I can see oh. a, side, a side industry growing up here, though, where you've got uh, companies specializing in doing this for small businesses, so they farm it out. But that's that will cost you. Oh, absolutely. That, that one's doing it for free, you. so yeah. Because I can tell you, I just listened to a, a recent webcast from the head of um, a company called Price Waterhouse, or Pro and um, that, yeah, know, that yeah. would be the very top of the company that would be their lobbyist <laughs> yeah. who, I heard, who I heard from and you know what he said he said this is a real hot potato yeah. that it is at best for most legal or accounting firms a break-even proposition to do this kind of work right in other words break-even means you don't earn any money you expend a whole lot of effort and you just make enough money to pay for your efforts but no profit right in addition, and I thought the whole goal of being in small business was to be profitable. Um, yeah. So we really, I haven't even seen the forms yet. I don't know if they are really out. Um, I know week after next, um, I'm going to be attending a class that will tell me a little bit more about this, but um, I've I've looked into this really for the last eight or nine months, Gary, and you know we've been out there at least the last three or four talking about this, but nobody seems to know anything about it. So it'll be interesting to see how this all lays out, or if at some point it might be repealed. Let's, so, let's hope it is. I mean, really, it sounds like a absolute disaster but for the meantime what do we do about it is there any action we can take to make sure that we're you know uh that maybe we're exempt perhaps that'd be cool <laughs> um, the only way i know so far is to set up a structure called a it's called actually called a business trust um it is a different way to do business obviously you're still gonna do with your operations still gonna do business the same way but in fact, a business trust, Gary, is actually exempt from the new Corporate Transparency Act. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so it's certainly worth looking into um, as a different way to operate your business. Um, but it is clearly defined as something that is not subject 
the Corporate Transparency Act. If you would like to know a little bit more about that, um, you could certainly contact me at um, 602-824-2299 or email me at scott.rulon29 at gmail.com. And I'm sure up there, Gary's got his phone number and his email as well. It's in the chat. It's in the chat. So um, if you're going to ask questions, and so when I give you out my email and I give you out my phone number, this is not, those are not given out to ask about the gift card if we're offering one with this. Those are about asking legitimate questions about the Corporate Transparency Act. Yeah, we are offering a gift card with this, but my number's on there and I'm the one who deals with them, so call me. Um, yeah. So if you call me or ask me about the gift card, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to shoot you <laughs> towards Gary. So please, <laughs> yeah. please, Gee, thanks, please understand that. Um, I have, I actually have to help my clients prepare for this. I have to help my clients with tax returns and other, um, other financial things of that nature. Um, but this is a real thing. There are criminal penalties. There are civil penalties. So please, 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 I would urge you to comply until something else happens. It's not worth doing it. Um, the office, of the um, OFAC or FISEN, which is a division of OFAC, um, OFAC, Office of Foreign Asset Control, by the way, another division of the U.S. Treasury, um, these are not the kind of guys you want to mess with, I promise no, you. No, I think not. Yeah, this um, is not... Uh... We've yeah, these what, are, yeah, what, these are what they before. call special agents. So these agents have quite a bit of power and they do carry guns, not to shock everybody, but they do. <laughs> um, they're of equivalent rank to just like people in the FBI. Um, but they carry they carry big badges, they carry guns. Um, and you don't, I'm not saying they're gonna threaten you, I'm just saying these people have significant power. And so these are not the people you want knocking at your front door. <laughs> Absolutely not. Particularly yeah. now they have your home address. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you laugh, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, sounds it. Now this yeah. is this is uh, quite alarming. I would uh, uh, urge everyone to that's listening to comply with this, and uh, uh, at least uh, until until we've all figured it out. Um, I, yeah, this is not one of these areas, uh, like when people refuse to pay their taxes. Mind you, that never worked out too well either. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with this. Maybe we'll get lucky and it'll get repealed. Um, I'm surprised it passed in the first place, to be honest. But, yeah, uh, but, um, it, it wasn't even scrutinized at all. Nobody knew about it. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be, I think it will be scrutinized a lot in the next couple of months. Uh, I would guess so. So, for part of that, that's a wait and see. But until you hear something different, I would certainly make sure my small business is ready to comply with this. And that includes people that have side hustles for hobby. Yeah. yeah. You're, you get caught up in this as well. Yeah, sounds like it. So, so, yeah, don't don't let this go. Civil and criminal penalties. Well, don't ignore it, I think, is, a, is good advice, yeah. Yeah. I think, we'd all, I think we'd all like, love to ignore it, but I don't think you can. No, so, this yeah. is one of those things that has real teeth in it. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, so don't, uh, please, please, please comply with these things. I would, even though we say tongue-in-cheek a couple things, um, this act is, is, is very important to the U.S. government as we speak. Obviously. So I would do my best to comply with things and head down, head down the right path. Yeah, um, absolutely. You can never go too far wrong doing that. So, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I agree. So that's about all I had for today. I just wanted to kind of give people an update. Uh, Gary, I think we should also let people know that we too, do talk about other financial subjects. We do indeed. And in fact, in the next couple of days, we're going to have a couple of uh, uh, very interesting ones coming up. Scott's going to be talking on college planning uh, at one of them. And we're also going to be talking about uh, 
uh, retirement income, how to add to your Social Security in the next couple of days as well and have a more comfortable retirement. So, yep, we do have more uh, more information to give you. So if you're interested in that, shoot us an email. Uh, you can shoot me over an email and I'll put you on the subscription list and just let you know whenever we have something come up and you can decide whether it's of interest and you want to join us. Yeah, so, or if you have some subject that you'd like to hear about. Absolutely, um, yeah. Happy, happy you know, to there's that a pop-up form at the end of this, and you can fill out some other financial subjects or business subjects that you'd like to hear about, and we'd be happy together to put together a presentation. Absolutely. You would indeed. So, All right. So we're going to sign off now, and when we do, a uh, short survey will pop up in your browser so don't miss that if you could fill that out for us uh, i think there's 10 questions and they're, they're pretty generic but uh uh yeah if you could fill that out and put any comments on there uh and uh, obviously let us know if you uh uh enjoyed the webinar or not i guess that's always helpful to know um again our numbers are on the screen gift card questions me only please don't don't uh scott's got enough on his plate at the moment i think now it's tax time as well um so yep we'll be happy to uh chat with you about any of those things so i'm going to stop recording now